Hi guys, so this video is pretty much DNA testing or more the basics of DNA testing, what we need to know before we look at the DNA test results so that we can understand the DNA test results better. So we'll end up talking about the three types of DNA testing and then we'll explain, you know, how traits or DNA is passed down, which will kind of start leading us to pretty much comparing um, DNA test results to other family member DNA test results and seeing how they compare to one another and finding new relatives. Um, and then also explain a little bit more about the ethnicity of DNA test results and explain that a little more in detail why they're estimates and not full DNA test or full ethnicities. Um, so I guess let's get started. So first off is the three types of DNA testing. The Y chromosome DNA test, the mitochondrial DNA test, and the autosomal DNA test. So not every company does all three DNA tests, so you'll want to look into that when you're researching companies that you want to do, which I should have a video on that here in a few weeks. I'll probably put a link to that video in the description below. So the basics of what these three types of DNA tests are. So the Y chromosome DNA test only works for males because only males have a Y chromosome. Females have two X chromosomes, males have a X chromosome and a Y chromosome. So this DNA test only works for males and it only searches the paternal line of your DNA test. So it will search the male's father's, 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 father's line. So mitochondrial DNA testing. Mitochondrial DNA testing works for both males and females. So everyone can take this test. The mitochondrial DNA test only does the maternal side, so your mother's 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 side. It doesn't do all the females in your family tree because the mitochondrial DNA is passed from mother to her daughters and sons, but only daughters can pass on the mitochondrial DNA. The sons cannot pass on mitochondrial DNA. It stops with them. So that's why it's not through every female on your family tree only the direct female line, the mother's, 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 mother's side. Next is autosomal DNA. Autosomal DNA test actually does everybody. So your parents, your grandparents, your great grandparents, directly up your tree, everybody directly up your tree. This is actually where most of your DNA comes from, I believe about 95%, and where a lot of our test results come from. Uh, such as later on we'll talk about chromosome comparison or cousin comparison or your ethnicity, this is where they're going to get it from is the autosomal DNA. So every company does the autosomal DNA, but not every company does the Y chromosome DNA or the mitochondrial DNA. So you'll want to look into that. So now I'm going to talk about how DNA works or how traits in DNA is passed down throughout the ages or throughout the generations. This is important to know. It will explain a lot of how DNA testing works and how you can compare their cousins and how you can compare to your parents and pretty much everything you need to know about DNA testing. So this is important because it's pretty much the basics of DNA testing. If you don't know this, the rest of this isn't going to make very much sense. So I kind of broke this down and tried to make this as simple as possible of how basic DNA is passed down or basic DNA traits are passed down throughout the generations. So this is just a basic chart of how DNA is passed down. So these little symbols I have up, such as letters that in this case, actually don't really mean anything. They're just to show you guys how DNA is passed down. So we have this family here. We have a mom and a dad and three children. The mom has these four characteristics, uh, A, C, E, and G. And dad has four characteristics, B, D, F, and H. Well, they have three kids. Well, half of your mom's DNA is in an egg and half your dad's DNA is in a sperm. Well, when the sperm and the egg come together, they make you, which is half your mom and half your dad. Well, when your siblings are born, they have a different set of half of your mom and half of your dad. Some of the halves are similar, 
but it's not the exact same halves that you were made. Otherwise, we'd all look identical and have the same identical DNA. But we don't, so I have half of my mom's DNA and half of my dad's DNA, and my siblings have a different set, a half of my mom and my dad's DNA. So that's what these children have. So all the children below have half their mom and half their dad's characteristics. So if you pay attention, you can kind of see they both have half and not more than half or whatever. But all of them do not have the exact same characteristics. They have some that are in the similar, such as some of them have A's and some of them have H's in the same spots or F's in the same spots, but they're all not exactly the same. They're not, all the siblings aren't the same and they all don't look the same as their parents. I hope you're following along. <laughs> So now one of the siblings got up, went off, and got married, and we can show the grandparents, the parents, and now the grandkids. And notice how, once again, the grandkids here on the bottom row do not have the same, exact same DNA as their parents, or the exact same symbols or characteristics as their parents. They have half of what their parents have, but not the exact same halves. But some are similar and some are not. And then you can see that the grandkids only have a fourth of what their grandparents have. Not a half of their grandparents' DNA, only a quarter of what their grandparents have. And they have a half of what their parents have. Um, it's just simple fraction math. You have a half, you divide it in half, they're going to have a fourth. So, <laughs> I have a fourth of what my grandparents have, and if we go back further, I have one-eighth of what my great-grandparents have. 1 16th of my great great grandparents. So it's just basic math. Um, so you're only going to have half of what your parents have, or your siblings are going to only have half of what you have. The percentage of DNA shared is going to be half. Your kids are going to have half, but you're like your nieces and your nephew and your grandparents are only going to have a quarter. And it's just going to be basic math where you divide it each time. So for your grandparents, it's 1 8th. For your great grandparents, it's than the 1 16th. And then when you get to cousins, it's even less of a fraction because you're not sharing the same DNA. Hopefully I explained that okay. <laughs> so this is important to know because you're not going to have the same DNA as your parents or your grandparents or your great grandparents or even your cousins. Some of the characteristics or traits have been lost throughout the ages or generations. So this is why we don't have the exact same DNA characteristics or traits as our family members. Um, this is why also your DNA test results will not be what you expected them to be. So one of the things you can do with your DNA test result when it comes back is compare with cousins or other people who have similar DNA or chromosomes as you. Quick biology lesson. Your DNA is stored in your chromosomes and you have 23 chromosomes. The 23rd chromosome actually tells you what your gender is. If you have two X chromosomes, then you're a female. If you have an X and a Y chromosome, you're a male. Um, but the other 22 chromosomes store your DNA and make up who you are. You can actually compare with other people who have done DNA test results from the same company. You can compare your DNA test and see what shared chromosomes or DNA you have. You'll see a list of people and it will tell you what percentage or CM, which is a measuring unit of how they measure DNA or chromosomes. Um, so you'll see what percentage or CMs you share of similar DNA and then how many segments in your chromosomes that you share or what your longest segment is. And then once you click on these people, it will pull up a chart. You can compare and see where you share chromosomes. So this is how you would find new relatives, is if you and somebody else down the line shared similar DNA, you can go and ask them, be like, you know, we share so much DNA together. This website says that we could possibly be first or second cousin, and you guys can compare your paper trail genealogy tree and see where you guys actually connect. And the other person, might have more information about your family tree than you do and you can now share that information and get to know and expand your family tree more. That's one of the bigger, big main factors of DNA testing and or how to expand your family tree through DNA testing. 
So moving on. So now let's talk about the ethnicity of DNA testing. This is actually most of what everybody does for DNA testing is wanting to know the estimate of their ethnicity. Every DNA company that tells you your ethnicity, they will say it's an estimate. This is not a full 100% what your ethnicity is. They cannot guarantee that 100%. Why they cannot guarantee that is because every company has a different set of testing pool. Not everybody's given their DNA to Ancestry.com or to Living DNA or MyHeritage or 23andMe. They've only given them to one or two companies. And those companies do not share their DNA tests. So if you give your DNA to 23andMe, Ancestry does not have that DNA. So everybody, each company has a different set of pool of people who've taken their test. So if we do have a company that has more Asians that do a DNA test, then they will have more in-depth information on Asians and than they would on Europeans or Spaniards. Um, if we have another DNA company that just happens to have a lot more people who are Hispanic and turn their DNA test results in, they'll have a lot more information on the Hispanic side. There's no way of knowing which company has done more of what ethnicity. It's just randomized, you know, we all are just pitching in our DNA and there's no way to know for sure. It is generally, by most companies, a good fair amount of each culture <laughs> that turns them in, um, just because they do advertise mostly here in America, and we are a big black melting pot of all ethnicities. <laughs> like I said before, with another reason why they say it's an estimate is what you think might be in your family tree and your ethnicity is not guaranteed of what you are. My husband has had family members in America for many, many years, since the beginning of the 1700s. But does that mean he's American? No. America is a melting pot of a bunch of ethnicities. But if we trace that genealogy line back more, then it goes to England and Scandinavian countries, which means he is possibly those races. Um, but like the English side could have been there for England for a while, but only breeded with Jews that were there in England or with some of the Scandinavian people who came to England or French people who happened to be in England. It doesn't necessarily mean that he was the race English. Um, a good way to explain this is probably Mexico. Those from Mexico and Puerto Rico and Cuba and stuff like that, those races are technically, we say, the Hispanic race. But then if you break down their history, what they were were Native Americans and the Spaniards came over to America and integrated their culture with the natives there, the Native Americans there. So what they are is a bunch of different Native American tribes and Spaniards. So you can't say that they're Mexican and do a DNA test result and come back saying, hey, my husband's Mexican because that's where his family's from when technically they're Native Americans and Spaniards. So his DNA test will come back saying more, he's more Spaniard or um, Native American. Whereas we would be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Native American, where's the Native American coming from? There's nobody Native American on the tree. Well, technically the Mexicans are Native American and Spaniards. So <laughs> that's why they say an estimate is you're not gonna be 100% sure of what you think you are from your tree because we have to break down cultures and where people came from and we kind of make those lines as humans of what ethnicities everybody is. If you look at a European map from the 1800s, those countries and borders are not even close to the same as the 1900s or nowadays the 2000s. So where do we call those races or those ethnicities when those cultures and those countries didn't exist 200 years ago. Germany wasn't around 200 years ago. So we make up those races and those countries and cultures. So that's why they say estimate is what you think you are may not actually be what you are. Another, so just like the picture chart I showed earlier of traits being passed down through the generations, you only get half the DNA or traits or race from your parents. 
You only get a quarter from your grandparents. So a race that's in your family tree that you think you could have, you may not necessarily have. Um, also could be the polar opposite where a race that race or an ethnicity that's been passed down for so long that you don't even know it's in your family tree or because it's so far back, you could have it. That's why the ethnicity DNA test results are pretty shocking to people. And what you have in your DNA is not necessarily the same that your siblings or your cousins have. Um, you could have a stronger DNA of a race that your siblings don't have. Or your sibling can have a stronger amount of another race that you don't have as much of. It's what makes us all unique and different. So I hope all this made sense to you guys. And I hope that you guys understand what I was talking about and you understand the basics. Um... I would like to thank the International Society of Genetic Genealogy so I can remember the basics of DNA and explain to you guys how these DNA test results work and why they're not exactly what you think they might be. Um, also for letting me use some of their pictures <laughs> and their diagrams. If you guys want to know more about genetic genealogy or watch some more in-depth video or classes. I recommend you guys go to the International Society of Genetic Genealogy, which is isogg.org. Um, I hope this video made sense to you guys and you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have questions, please comment below. I will try to answer them and explain them as best as I can. This is a tricky subject. Um, and I hope you all have a beautiful week. Bye.